announcements. I want to also say that um, next Sunday, the first Sunday of the new year, we will have a business meeting right after service, amen, so that we can talk about finances and how we're going to proceed for 2018. So I need every member of Mount Sinai to plan to stick around for about 15, 20 minutes. It won't take too much of your time. It'll be right here in the sanctuary right after service. Amen. We also want to acknowledge Bishop Roberts and his wife, Kathy. We're so glad to have you with us today. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Man of God, you're welcome to come up front and join us, please. Amen. God bless. Come, y'all can do better. I say he's a bishop. Respect his office. Come on. Y'all know better. This is an apostolic house. You know how we respond. Amen. Bless your man of God and bless your wife. Amen. So glad to have you. Amen. At this time, let's prepare our hearts for giving. Amen. The men are serving. Our male presbyters are serving. They're coming at this time to give. We're so excited about Watch Night. We're doing something different this year, so I need y'all to help me. You know, I had to break some word curses. Somebody said, ain't nobody coming to 7 o'clock service. I had to break that word curse in the spirit. People are going to come at 7 because I know there's people who don't want to be out here. See, I know there's people ain't going to be here at 10 o'clock, so I expect to see y'all at 7. We're going to have old-fashioned church. We're going to have testimony service. And this is 2018 that we're going into. And our theme is the yes and the amen. We're believing God for yes and amen for every promise that he's spoken to us. We're also believing that this is a year that we're going to see it. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to see what I'm believing God for. God didn't say nothing. Look at the other neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. I, believe I believe that I'm going to see what I believe in God for. But as I was studying, uh, Elder Tavis, studying the number 18, 18 is the number of bondage. So I begin to say, Lord, how can it be the year of yes and amen, but also the year of bondage? And the revelation that God gave me is going to blow your mind. You have to be here tonight at 7 or 10 to hear it. Oh, it's off the chain. I tell you, God woke me up in the middle of the morning and said, look at that and look at this. I said, good God, from, it's right there in the book. So I will say this one piece. If you don't fight to get what's yours, you're not going to get it next year. Oh, you better hear what I say. If you don't fight in your praise, if you don't fight in your prayer, then you're not going to get it. You're going to have another year just talking with no manifestation. But I declare and decree that God is going to release a fight on this house in the name of Jesus. That you will fight for what is yours and you will see it in 2018 so come on back tonight at 7 and 10 dress down like we are now be comfortable and we're going to have a good time in the lord amen you have three ways by which you can give you can give by uh, cash if you need an envelope raise your hand you give by cash you can give by check make sure you write clearly on your envelopes and on your checks or you can download the app givelify on your phone and you can give with your debit card amen so you have three ways by which you can give Amen. So we're preparing our offerings right now all over the building. Amen. And when you have that, you can raise up your offering envelope or raise up your phone. Amen. We're going to wave them before the Lord as they did in the Old Testament. The priests would wave their offerings to see if the Lord would be pleased. They would not presume that God was pleased. Amen. They would ask. All right. So even if you don't have, you are the offering. So raise your hand as well. All right. Let's sing our song. Wave your hands in the air. Wave it like you have no care. Because I'm blessed like that. Come on, come on. Because I'm blessed like that. Say it again. Wave your hands in the air. Wave it like you have no care. Because you're blessed like that. Come on, come on. Because I'm blessed like that. Come on, come on. Father, we thank you for the gifts and the givers. We know that the seed that leaves our life, leaves our hand, doesn't leave our life. But we thank you, God, that it shall come back to us some 36, yes, even 100 fold. We thank you that the needs of God are met in abundance because of your supernatural favor and your faithfulness of your people in giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother ministers, you can serve the people of God. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, seek to save from the evil sea, but the devil is defeated. We are blessed. 
Somebody say bless, 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 Well, the devil is defeated defeated because we are. Hey, we're laying in the midnight now. God's gonna turn it around. Come on, come on, come on. And it's gonna work in your favor. Just you wait and see. Somebody say, wait in the midnight. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Just you wait. Got your loose chains. Got your loose chains. One second, hold on. Now wait a minute. I need y'all to be a little bit more lit on the last Sunday of 2017. Come on, I need y'all to stand up and help me. Come on, we came to have a Holy Ghost party. I know it's not watch night service yet, but come on, we can still down. Oh, come on. Hey, 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 Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We have a tradition here at the Mount on fifth Sundays. We have seven ministers for seven minutes. Yeah. Amen. We have a lot of ministers here yeah. at the Mount. I'm very proud of our presbytery. And I try to give them an opportunity to preach on Sundays. Amen. A lot of pastors don't do that or have the opportunity. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to give our ministers are opportunity to preach the word. These are our elders. These are ordained ministers here at the Mount. And I'm very excited because they don't always get a chance to preach in-house. And so I wanted them to release the word of the Lord to you for 2018. They're going to be talking about the Beatitudes. Amen. They're going to tell you how to be blessed. Tell somebody you need to know how to be blessed. I know the world has its own system for how to be blessed, but the Bible is very clear. Or what positions you to be blessed. And we want you to be positioned to be blessed. Tell somebody, I'm positioned. You're not talking to be blessed. See, if you keep your mouth closed, the devil keeps your life bound. Come on, open up your mouth to say, I'm positioned to be blessed. Say it one more time like you believe it. I am positioned to be blessed. If you believe that, come on, put a little praise on it right there. That's how you make God do it. You praise him like you're already blessed. Praise him like you already have it. Praise him like it's already yours. Praise him like you already, come on. Praise him like you're already walking into it. Oh, hallelujah. 
Amen. So they're going to come. We have Elder Calvin Williams will come. Elder Rebecca Williams, um, Cobbs, excuse me, and the Elder Daryl Jones will come. Elder Marva um, McKnight will come. Elder Sean Cobb, Elder P. Angela Jones, and then last but not least, Elder Nadine Jones. Amen. They will come in that order. I'll jump in the middle and sing a little song to break up the talking. I need y'all to help me. Two things. They got seven minutes, and they know. So for our guests, I know, Bishop, you probably feel the same way. If I say seven minutes, I mean seven minutes. And if they go over seven minutes, I would kindly tell them to sit down. So I'm not being rude for our guests. I'm not being rude. Seven minutes is seven minutes. Amen. And they had enough time to prepare themselves. And I need you to help me. Everybody smile. Look at the beautiful, amazing, captivating smiles. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say preach. preach. I want you to practice. I want you to push them. Don't sit there looking all mean and sour faced. It. Don't do it because I'll get you for messing with my preachers. <laughs> okay. So I want you all to practice and support them and push them as they come. And this time let us receive Elder Calvin Williams and then we'll continue in that order. Come on, clap your hands as he comes. God bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. To my bishop, Bishop Jackson, and to all the ministers, and to our brothers and sisters of the church. I will begin with from Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 7. Let us pray. Dear gracious Lord, I ask that you go with me as I speak the word of God. Lord, I decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. From the fifth chapter of Matthew, the seventh verse, blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. I looked in the dictionary to get a better understanding of mercy. And mercy is love, companion, compassionate, kindness, and I will give forgiveness. And God has mercy. But we, as brothers and sisters, must obtain mercy. Mercy and compassion between our brothers and our sisters. God had mercy on us a long time ago. God had mercy because he did not have mercy on you and me. We would not have been here. God had mercy because his mercy brought us along. Oh, mercy. Our grace and our mercy. And today, brothers and sisters, we need to show more love. I'm put that love with that mercy between our brothers and sisters. We need to cut out this hate between one another and show mercy. Oh, when your parents, the old saints can go with it. They didn't go along with everything that you done. But they'll look at that child when that child done wrong, they'll say, Lord, have mercy on him. Don't let me kill him, but just have mercy on him. Oh, when that husband, wife didn't do right, you want to knock him out with the frying pan, but you go somewhere and say, Lord, have mercy on him. Same way when that wife didn't do right. You'll go out the door and go down the street somewhere and say, Lord, have mercy on her. I heard somebody say, mercy suit the case. 
Yes, but I'm glad when the mother and your father got up in the morning. They said, Lord, have mercy. When they looked around and things weren't going like they wanted to go, they would say, Lord, have mercy. When they didn't have clothes to put on their children back, they'll say, Lord, have mercy. Make a way for me. They'll say, Lord, when they got the phone call that their child was in jail, they will say, Lord, have mercy on him. Lord, mercy will suit the case. Mercy. We'll bring you a long way. Oh, glory to God. Mercy. So going into 2018, let us have mercy on one another. Let us have mercy in the church, on the usher board, on the deacon board, in the choir, the mother's board. Let's have some mercy. And let us have mercy with our leader. Lord, have mercy. Good morning, family. I would like to thank my bishop for this opportunity and to give honor to all members of the Presbytery. Pray for a minute. Lord, use me this morning. Let everything that come out of my mouth be your will. Give a word to somebody. Lord, allow me to teach through the Holy Spirit. Guide me, use all of my experiences, good and bad, for this word today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Okay, I'm not going to preach, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm a teacher. So I'm going to teach. Y'all mind? Okay. So, first of all, I want to give you a little background on the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes were Christ's personal sermon on the mount. The Beatitudes were Christ's words. In each of them, he promised us blessings. And in the biblical context, the word blessings here means happiness. So if we are these things, the Beatitudes, we will find happiness. Now, the scripture that I have, I've never understood it until now. I've never understood it. It says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And my entire life, I would hear that, especially at funerals, and I'm just like, this ain't, I ain't comforted. We just lost someone precious to us. So most of us think of mourning when, when we lose someone, a family member, a good friend, and we don't feel comforted. But I want you to look at mourning in other contexts, yes. okay? So I'm gonna give you some modern day terms for mourning. How about self-pity, mm -hmm. depression, yeah. disbelief, yeah. anxiety, these are all words that can describe mourning. And when you feel these things, it's a heaviness that you cannot explain. It's heavier than losing someone to death. Have you ever mourned? I mean, really mourned for something? Maybe a, a relationship or a situation, a job, a car, a marriage, and you crawl up in that fetal position and you almost wish to die type mourn? that's when you're comforted because you call on it. Short um, testimony. I um, lost my social security card, the one that said Rebecca Williams Cobb. And it wasn't a big deal when I couldn't find it at first. And um, I was looking for it for a couple of weeks. I look in this handbag and that handbag. I look in this drawer and that drawer. I couldn't find it. And my husband said, did you ask God to put your hands on it? So I said, Lord, put my hands on my social security card. Well, within five minutes, I had it. Why? Because I accessed the Holy Spirit. See, mourning is just one of the ways that we access the Holy Spirit because the comforter is the Holy Spirit. 
I'm not even reading from my notes. I got a scripture for it. Hold on. I do. It says, But when the comforter is come, whom shall I send unto you from the Father? Even the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father shall testify of me. So as you see, the scripture is prophetic in nature. Blessed are those who mourn. Because that's one way that we access the Holy Spirit. We have to go through a mourning process. In fact, I went through this before even giving you my title was the necessary mourning. See, mourning is necessary in order to receive the comfort that we need. The comfort only comes through the mourning. You don't know what it feels like to be comforted if you've never mourned. If you don't cry out, Lord, help me. Lord, where are you? Lord, I need you. You have to say those things in order to get the comfort that you need. I'm done, y'all. I, I will do this, the end of mine, because I actually wrote it. I didn't read none of it. I have everything lost will be found. Everything taken from you will be returned. The morning is a very necessary step of your journey of life. The Bible calls those that, are more, those that mourn blessed. Why are those who mourn blessed? Because they will be comforted. Comforted by who? The advocate sent from our Heavenly Father himself to be our comforter. How many of you are glad to know that we serve a God that won't just leave us blowing in the wind, but will actually come to our rescue every single time? All you have to do is access. Access. Say access. access. How do you have the comfort? Access, access to the Holy Spirit. Uh, good morning, Mount Sinai. All right, before I get into this, I want to be honest. This, uh, this sermon was written in pain because about three days ago, a man came up to me that I do not know, and he said, there's a calling on your life for you to preach the word. Then yesterday, when I should have been studying, I watched Diddy, Bad Boy Reunion. And Diddy is somebody who I always wanted to be like, and I know how to rap. I've maintained excellence when it comes to rapping. But I, w I was struggling, fighting with my wife, because I said, baby, you know, God said, you need to be similar to Bishop. Well, I said, Bishop ain't Diddy yet. Diddy, he ain't Diddy. I'm not the whole way. So um, last night was rough because, you know, I know how to rap. I, I, I know how to do that, man. I mean, I've been doing it all my life. But um, the man came up to me and said, there's a calling on your life. And, you know, the Bible says when the elders lay hands on you, they tell you they're calling. And they, again, confirm that you are called to preach. Amen. So I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to flow. But I want you guys to flow with me. So let me pray, Lord. We thank you so much, Father. Uh, I submit to you my time, my study, my patience, my trials, my experiences to be used by you, Father. Let me teach your word accurately with power, Father. We thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I titled this message, It's Yours. Before we get into our message about Matthew 5, blessed are those that hunger after righteousness, for they shall be completely satisfied. It's vital we remember the sermon before that, Matthew 4, 5 through 10, when Jesus was tired and hungry. Bishop always tells us, when you do the scripture, read the scriptures before and after. Remember, in Matthew 4, 5 through 10, Jesus was hungry and fasting for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. But he modeled what hunger, blessed, and righteousness.